Boatworks today is sponsored by Total Boat and Alexia Yacht Coatings, as well as supported by the generosity from the beautiful folks over on Patreon. Thank you so much. Is it possible to just paint over an existing molded non-skid to give it a fresh look? Hmm. Well, let's talk about that one. So welcome back to shop, everybody. Hope you are all doing well. So for this week, I had a question come in from Jim over in Maryland. Uh, let me show you what he's got going on. Welcome aboard Dreamcatcher. I've got a question about surface prep for painting molded in anti-skid paint. It was painted with something that I'm not sure if it was a one part or a two part paint long ago. The advice that I got several years ago when I did a similar job on the deck above the pilot house was to sand it all down as flat as I could, coat it with epoxy that was thickened with uh, milled fibers, and then paint over top of that. Basically make it flat and then add anti-skid. It turned out okay, but it was a lot of work. I talked to Brian at Alexiel at the Annapolis Boat Show, and he suggested using a wire brush to, to get as much of the stuff out as I could and then just paint over top of it with the proper primer. That's the other direction that I could take that would be a lot easier. I'm not sure how the paint will stick to that, and uh, you know I don't want to do this again. So I'm seeking your advice about how you would approach it. All right, now when you're talking about top coating a surface, whether it's going to be smooth, you know, a smooth area, or non-skid, like you know, in Jim's case here, uh, there's a few things that you need to try and figure out. And the first, the first and most important one is the surface that you're going to be top coating. You need to figure out if it's already been painted before or if it's the the original raw gel coat. Now, when you're talking about painting over top of another paint. There's, uh, again, you know, some things you need to figure out. And the first one being, you need to determine what that paint or what, what type of paint was originally used, if it was a one or a two part paint. Now, that becomes important specifically if the paint that you're wanting to use is a two part system. So, for example, uh, you know, two part, one part material, such as like wet edge or bright side or, um, easy, easy, Poxy? Easy poxy. <laughs> Sorry, Tom. <laughs> uh, one part material can go over top of anything. It can go over top of another one part uh, uh, surface, or it can also go over top of a two part surface. Now, where it changes is if, if you're intending to use a two part material like All Grip or Alexio, that material can only be applied over top of another two part system. So, for example, if, if you were to take Alexio or All Grip, and apply that over top of wet edge or bright side or easy epoxy. Uh, the solvents in that two part paint, uh, they're, they're gonna melt and they're gonna bubble the existing finish. So the long and short of it, whatever you apply is gonna end up falling off most likely in sheets if you're doing a large area. So in, in Jim's case here, we need to do, we need to determine what, what kind of material he's working with here. Uh, and to do that, we need to do what's called a compatibility test. Now, a while back, I want to say, I don't know, a few years ago, I did a step-by-step a -step video on how to do this compatibility test. And I'll, I'll include a link for that right up in here. But the short version of that is that it, essentially what you're looking to do is to take a, like a cotton ball or a paper towel or a small rag and soak it in the, in the reducer of the paint that you're intending to use. So, for example, if you were going to be using all grip and you were going to be rolling it on, Spraying's a different, you know, a little bit of a different scenario. But if you're going to be rolling it on, the reducer for all grip that you'd want to use would be their T0031. And if you were going to be using Alexial, their equivalent would be their R and Richard 5015. Now, in Jim's case, I believe he's, uh, I believe he mentioned he was going to be using all grip because he's got, you know, a fair amount of it on hand. And understandably, he wants to use it up before it gets bad. So essentially what you do is you take, you take this cotton ball, rag, paper towel, whatever it may happen to be, and you tape it to the side of the hull. Now you can cover it with plastic. You don't necessarily have to. Uh, it just kind of slow, helps to slow down the evaporation, but you tape that to the side of the hull or the area that you're looking to paint and you leave it there for 10, 15, 20 minutes, peel it back off and, you know, feel that surface where that patch was with your fingernail. If the, if the existing surface started to bubble, or it just easily peels off like it does here, uh, then you are dealing with a one part surface. Now, if it's 
just uh, if it's un, un, unscathed, if it's not if it's not damaged at all, then you're dealing with a two-part system, which you know is ideally what you want to have if you're going to be going over top of it with another two-part material. So if after doing this test you determine that you know the surface that you're working on is is coated with a one-part material, you can still go over top of that with a, a two-part paint, but you'll have to do some some additional steps here in order to prep that surface. Specifically, you gotta you gotta completely remove that one part material. Now, in Jim's case, uh, I think uh, if he's if he actually goes forward with using all grip, he's gonna be best off to go ahead and completely remove that by sanding. You can use 120 grit, 150 grit. I don't know that I'd go any more fine than that, and I don't know that I'd go any more coarse than 120. But he's gonna be best off to sand that existing paint off, take it right back down to bare gel coat. Now, if after doing this test you determined that you know there was no damage, nothing bubbled, nothing got soft on me, you got lucky. Uh, now, now we're looking at you know what needs to be done prep-wise for that non-skid to uh, I guess get it ready for recoating and basically resurfacing it with some new paint. And when you're talking about top coating an existing molded non-skid, you know, whether it's that popcorn type texture or like the, the, the molded diamond, diamond shaped. Uh, the problem that you run into is that it, it is almost impossible to adequately sand or etch every surface, every contour within that, that, within that, that texture to the point where you can be confident that you're going to get good adhesion. Now, you know, a wire wheel, you might be able to get it, you might be able to use that. I mean, it'll definitely scuff the surface, but is it going to scuff every little angle, every little trough, every every part of that uh, you know, existing non-skid? Or is it just going to be very selective as far as whatever those wires are going to be able to hit? Uh, there are some other options. You could maybe try scrubbing the living crap out of it with some like some pumice. Or um, I know like Pettit, they have a product that's called Bio Blue. I've never used it. Um, or you could even go over top of it with like Comet cleaner, because Comet's got, you know, kind of a, a gritty um, texture to it. But in either of those situations, in any of those situations, uh, if, again, this is hypothetically, if you are able to adequately touch every single detail of that non-skid, the, 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 the etch that you're able to put on there is still going to be very, very fine. Uh, you know, is it going to be coarse enough to actually hold on to the primer and the paint without it, you know, flaking or chipping off? you know, a few months or maybe even a year down the road? I don't know. Uh, and when you're talking about using material that's as expensive as two-part paints are, I personally think that, that would, you could be setting yourself up for doing a lot of work and spending a lot of money on material and, and, and just have it fail. Uh, and then you got to go back and redo it all over again. You know, there's a, that's a saying that I'm quite fond of. It's buy once cry once well you know if you kind of swap that over into you know a task you're trying to accomplish i suppose the equivalent would be just bite the bullet and do it right <laughs> it's something like that but let's just say hypothetically you were able to find a way to etch that surface to the point where adhesion isn't going to be your problem now then there's going to be another issue you're going to run into and that's going to be one of practicality right now, when you're talking about the overall painting process, first thing you're going to put down, again, I'm going to be specifically talking about non-skid here. Uh, you're going to do one, maybe two coats of primer, and then you're going to do two, maybe three coats of paint. You want to have enough film thickness there, especially as a non-skid, to where it's going to be able to take some wear and tear without actually popping right through, right back down to the bare gel coat. Now, when you're doing this, uh, you know, regardless, you know, what paint you're using, if it's going to be all grip or Alexial, you're going to just to, to save your sanity, you're going to want to make sure that you're doing each of these coats, each of these, what I say, two or three to five coats, what between the primer and the paint, uh, within 24 hours of the previous. So, because that way you're able to go back over with the next coat without having to sand. You're, you're going to be dealing with chemical bonding, right? But over the course of, say, those three to five coats, not sanding when you're when you're running your roller over top of that that non-skid surface the roller is going to leave a nice thin film on the peaks or the very top you know uh, sections or top peaks of the non-skid 
But what that also, but what also happens is that down in the valleys or the troughs of the non-skid or in the, the popcorn texture, a lot more material is going to get deposited in those low areas. So over those, of course, of those three, four, five coats, what you end up doing is you, you end up building up the low areas of the non-skid while not really, while you're not really providing any build on the peaks of the non-skid. So you're filling the non-skid in with paint. And well, that kind of defeats the purpose because you're making your non-skid um, less non-skiddy, <laughs> if, that, if that makes sense. So bringing this full circle back to Jim's situation here, uh, you know, he is going to be, although it's more work, he's going to be much, much better off taking all that existing non-skid and sanding it, either completely sanding it smooth or sanding it almost smooth and then coming back with some type of a, some type of material to fill in the low spots. But at the end of the day, uh, what you want to be, what you want to be left with before you start, you know, doing the new non-skid application is you want to have a smooth surface. Now, as far as what you could use to fill in those low spots, if that's the, the direction you go, uh, you could use a fairing compound. In epoxy, I would, I would, I would highly recommend going with an epoxy based uh, material because epoxy shrinks less than say like a polyester uh, option uh, but either would cer certainly work uh, actually I guess it's not quite as critical on a non-skid section as it would be on like a smooth area uh, just real quick if you're using polyester you know base fairing materials on a, on a surface that you're going to be painting uh, Polyester shrinks a lot more than epoxy as it's curing, and this can take several weeks, right? So what happens, you go ahead, you do your fairing, it looks great, you top coat it with your primer and your paint, looks fantastic, you come back a few weeks later, and because that epoxy has shrunk, now all of a sudden the, 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 the film of the paint looks a little distorted, right? That's because of the shrinking uh, that's happened from the polyester material. Now, epoxy doesn't shrink anywhere near as much as that. So that's why it's a more stable substrate for painting. And it's actually the preferred substrate when you're going to be going over top of it with, you know, primer and paint. Um, but getting back to Jim's situation again, uh, he could go ahead and fill in those low spots with, you know, like a fairing compound, like Total Fair. Or he could, if he wanted to mix up his own, he could also take some, just some regular epoxy and mix in some milled glass fibers or some cabocil. You, you probably want to keep it a little bit on the thin side just so that it can kind of flow out and fill where, you know, wherever it's low. But either one of those approaches would work just fine. Now, if you are curious as far as what's involved with applying a, a brand new non-skid finish, I'll include a link to a video up in here where I go through it. It's step by step how to get, you know, arguably the best non-skid finish ever. Um, it's just, it, it is my preferred way and providing you're able to stick with it for four consecutive days you can go from a completely smooth surface to an absolutely beautiful non-skid in four days, no sanding between any of the steps, again, providing you're able to stick with it for consecutive days. Now, if you're looking at a project that's more, uh, you know, a little bit larger, where it's gonna involve some smooth areas, whether it's waterways in between non-skid sections, Generally speaking, and if you want to know more about this, I can, uh, you know, address this in a, in a future video. But generally speaking, the process goes, you're going to want to do all of your smooth areas first, start to finish. So do your prime coats and then do all your paint coats, start to finish. Let that paint cure two, three, four days. Uh, then at that point, it should be safe to come back. And then now you can tape off for each of the, the individual non-skid sections and then repeat the steps that, you know, that I showed up in this video. And when it's all said and done, at the end of day four, you pull your tape, give it some time to cure, it will look like a million bucks. So Jim, I hope this helps a little bit. Now, if any of you have questions about a project that you're working on that you'd like to have answered on this channel, I will include a video link right up in here that'll go through uh, and show you how to get that submitted. And on that note, I think I'm gonna wrap this up. So as always, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you did, hit that thumbs up button. If you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button and the notification bell. Thank you very much, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to leave those down below. I will do my best to follow up with you. And as always, I wanna thank you for your time. Thanks for watching. Have a wonderful weekend, and I'll see you in the next video. This has been a Boatworks Today Projection.